Okay. I'm going to pass this around. Uh, this, if you can let this go around, make it uh, work its way kind of back uh, to the front by the end, that'd be great. Um, what you see here is a photo of what my fraternity experience means and where all of this began. So, what you, this speech, of, when I was trying to come up with a speech years ago, I was really trying to look at something that marketed um, who we are to, our, to the potential new members, to understand what type of organization we were, but then also what focuses on for current brotherhood and what do they need to know about who we are as an organization. And I came up with three points, and then I'll hit on those three points as we go along with the speech. But it all starts with this photo. So what you see in this photo is you see um, an all-female residence hall. I went to Allegheny College, which was a 18-person student college up in Meadville, Pennsylvania. Uh, didn't really know much about it. And I remember one of the first weeks when I was there, I, I showed up at the at the post office, because there was just a post office that um, was one place where everybody could go because it's 1,800 students. And there was this key up on the screen, and, or up on the wall, and it was just cut out, and it just said 7.30. And so these two girls, Christy and uh, Kelly, they grab me and they're like, oh, you've got to go to this. This is at 7.30 tonight. We're going to go. And I'm like, well, two girls ask you to go to something in college your freshman year, you go. Uh, no matter what the reason is, you just go. And so I went. So what it was, was it was a pinning ceremony. And a pinning ceremony was very, very rare. What would happen is, if it was a key, then it was part of, if it was a key, then it was a kappa kappa gamma, if it was a kite, it was a kappa alpha theta, and they put whatever time um, would be up on the, what time everyone was supposed to show up. And then you would basically, if it was coming from the north, you would, the, well, let's back up. The sorority would come out and they would pass, they would get out there and they would pass around this candle and the candle would end up on the girl magically. The only way the girls know seem to know how that works and how that happens, it ends up right on that girl. And if it was coming from the north, then Theta Chi or, uh, <laughs> Theta Chi or Delta Tau Delta was coming to sing to them. And if it was coming from the south, then it was Phi Psi or if it was uh, SAE who were coming up to sing to them. And they would come and parade. And so you would walk down this big, long walkway. Think of kind of the walkway um, here in the Oval. And they would carry all of these torches. And they would reach up, and the girl was crying, and the guys were singing to them and carrying the torches. And then they would throw flowers up on the girl. They would lift the guy up onto the balcony. And then the whole place would explode. Because you see, it wasn't just a couple people or a couple students. There was a 1,000 people who showed up to this event. There are a thousand people who showed up to this event uh, because they wanted to see these, these, to celebrate the culture of fraternity and the culture of the sorority. It was amazing. And it was at that moment that I knew I wanted to join a fraternity. But my brother was a Theta Chi. So I wanted to be a Theta Chi. Now all my other friends on the floor went SAE. Everybody on my floor, because my RA was an SAE, they all went SAE. I said, no, I'm going to be a Theta Chi. So I went and I, 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 I pledged their program. I went through the process. But there were three guys who didn't like me because they didn't, I became best friends with the vice president. The vice president was nicknamed Scorps, and I was, going to, I was already nicknamed Little Scorps before I really officially even had a bid. So I was like, but I'm going to pledge. I'm going to be a Theta Chi. My brother's a Theta Chi. But the three of them said no. And so I wasn't going to be a Theta Chi. They even had me write a letter to say, you know, please let this person join. Don't, don't not let this person join. But they said no. So I went to all my friends who were SAEs, and I said, well, can I join SAE now? And they're like, well, no, you're probably a spy. And I was like, well, I'm not a spy. But that's what they thought I was. So that was it. I wasn't an SAE. I wasn't a Theta Chi. I wasn't in a fraternity. So I said, all right, what else am I going to do? So I went and uh, became an RA because I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know where else to live. I was going to live in a fraternity house. So when I went, uh, so when I started being an RA, I started noticing something, though. The Theta Chi's, all they did was, all they did was drink, which is fine, which is fine, except 
Then I noticed the SAEs, when you would see someone giving a tour on campus, they actually got to wear their letters, SAE. When you saw somebody working at the, the union, um, you would see them wearing their letters, SAE. When you saw people doing service on campus, you would see them wearing the letters SAE. See, I was looking for the organization that I thought I wanted to be a part of because my brother was a part of that, instead of looking at what well, was going to be the organization for me. There was SAE. So my junior year, my friend Ryan Resnick came to me and said, I want to join a fraternity. Which fraternity should I join? And I said to him, there's only one, and that's SAE. You see, I actually recruited, again, small campus, I actually recruited 10 out of their 20 members and was nominated as their number one recruiter, even though I wasn't an SAE. I'm still not even allowed in their SAE house because, again, they still thought I was a spy. But I still, I was nominated as their number one recruiter. And I, Jerry Zupan, and uh, all of my friends, Kelly Schaefer, I, I, I got to experience their moment in SAE with them. When they all got initiated, and you finally get to say the words Phi Alpha, and they all got initiated, I went to lunch with them. And I went to lunch with them, and it was Phi Alpha for passing the salt, Phi Alpha for cutting the steak, Phi Alpha. I was the only SAE not at that table, uh, the only non-SAE at that table. And I was at that moment when I heard all of them say Phi Alpha over and over and over again that I realized joining a fraternity and joining SAE is a privilege not a right. It's a privilege, not a right. And that's what I thought. I thought I had a privilege to be a Theta Chi. I thought I had a privilege to be an SAE, but I realized that it was a privilege, or I thought I had a right to be an SAE, a right to be a Theta Chi, but I realized it was a privilege. So, again, my senior year, I was their number one recruiter. I was finally allowed in their house. I, I was finally allowed to um, engage with everybody, and then I came here to Ohio State for grad school. And I came to Ohio State, didn't think much about Greek life, that was beyond me at that point. And then about two years in, I was a first year hall director in uh, Siebert Hall, and then this one guy, Matt Reckman, um, came to me for drinking in the halls, and I had to meet with him, and we usually ask questions like, how's your academics, what are you getting involved in on campus, and he goes, oh, I think I'm going to accept the bid to SAE. I was like, oh, this is great. Tell me all about your SAE experience. I want to hear all about it. He probably thought it was great because he didn't have to talk about his alcohol experience. He just had to talk to me about SAE. It was like, all right, whatever. Uh, and so, and then I just learned all about the SAE experience from him. And I was like, oh, that's great. You know, that's really great that there's a chapter on campus. It was just coming back around that time. Um, they were, and so I just engaged with him on that experience. A couple years later, I was put in charge of Smith Hall, and I was the hall director there in charge of Smith Hall. And then um, I was assigned SAE. I was assigned 20 guys from SAE because they were basically a 20, 27 person chapter at the time. And then I was assigned 80 sorority girls. The 80 sorority girls did nothing. The 20 SAEs did everything. The 20 SAEs worked their tail off more than I had ever seen any owls work their tail off and kind of moving the owl students in. Um, I even remember uh, Andrew Wessendorf, who at the time was probably like a 300 pound man, carrying up this pink uh, stuffed animal bear up this flight of stairs because the girl couldn't be without it and didn't want to wait in an elevator for it. And I was like, who is this guy? Who are these guys? Who are these SAEs? And so I engaged with them a little bit. They came back to me and they said, um, you know, we want to we, we want to kind of do this recruitment event, but we don't know how. Can you help us out with that? And so I just kind of guided them and helped them out with that. They then said, we want to do this uh, philanthropy event where we just collect food in the residence halls. Can you help us out with that? We don't know how to help out with that. So I helped them out with that. And just little by little, I was just helping out the organization as they asked for it. And then the president came to me, Kevin Bowen, and he said, you know, the chapter voted. We would like you to be our chapter advisor. Would you like to come to chapter meeting this week? And I was like, yeah. I want to come to chapter meeting. I would love to be a part of that chapter experience. This would be great. So I show up at chapter meeting, and then Dominic Bergano comes up and shakes my hand and introduces me. Dominic, uh, David Wilczek came up and shook my hand. A couple people knew me, but no one else knew who the heck I was. Turns out I wasn't actually voted chapter advisor. Kevin Bowen just appointed me and told everybody I was appointed as chapter advisor. And suddenly here I am at a chapter, me at a chapter meeting and I'm just like sitting in the back like, hey, how about this and why not this and uh, what about this experience? So I, was, I wasn't even 
I'm there, these guys chat their advisors because some random dude appointed me instead of actually nominating me or having me be part of that experience. And it was, it was, it was an engaging experience. It was a growing chapter. It was a uh, chapter that needed some strength, needed some growth, but it really were good, solid men. The men that I was talking about, the men who wanted to do more but just didn't know how. And about two years into that experience, I got a call and they said to me, the chapter did vote when you weren't able to be at a chapter meeting unanimously. And we want to honor and initiate you. We want you to be an SAE. So this batch. I waited 13 years for this batch. I waited 13 years to be able to say the words by Alpha. I, be able, I, I waited 13 years to be a part of these men and a part of these men's lives. I was part of their lives, sure. But this is one of the more uh, meaningful moments of my experience. So you'll see in the, in the photo, you'll see that um, there, excuse me, you'll see that I, I asked the people, I'm like, well, now that I can say Phi Alpha, and I, I still hesitate to this day to say the words Phi Alpha, now that I can say the words Phi Alpha, what, what is, what's the point of the people carrying the torches? Who got to carry the torch? Who got to be the ones who were selected to carry the torch? Is it just like the guy's most popular friends? Is it the person's, uh, their, who they just could show up that day and just happen to grab the torch? But it turns out he was like, no, no. I asked Joe Vickless and he said, no, it's the person who they felt carried the torch the most for the chapter. So that when that person was going up and they were going to pin um, that woman, they wanted the people behind him who supported him and supported his experience the most. And that's who that person is. And so I look back at carrying the torch and I look at this chapter and see how it's grown over the years. See how it's grown over the seven, eight years that I've been part of this organization. I've seen this chapter just show up to a hospital um, for an, an alumni who was in there who they had never met before in their lives because that's what you do as an SAE. I've seen this chapter, they give back to a philanthropy, not because, oh, I guess we should do a philanthropy, but because there's a reason and a why to doing a philanthropy. There's a reason we raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. I've seen this chapter do say, you know what? We're not happy with the status quo. We're a 27 person chapter. We're going to look at ourselves over and over and over again and say, where can we improve? What can we do better? What can we do better for this person, this entire organization's experience? What can we do better when you're in this room and you say, you know what, I feel like I might be missing out on something here. It should be up to the fraternity to find that way to, or to bring each other together. Kind of even looking at Grayson and talking about, Grayson and I had conversations of, well, what can Grayson do? What can Seth do? What can these individuals do to bring back to this chapter? They used to say, screw IFC, and then they decided to say, we want to run and change and fix IFC. They used to say, who needs awards? There's no, why do we need to have awards? That, that doesn't say anything about us. Instead of it saying, you know what, awards also say, we might be on the right track. You know, we can still be social, but we can carry the torch for our chapter and know that we, <coughs> and know that we will bring something new to this organization. And we worked every day to, yes, be the national uh, SAE fraternity of the year, of which there is only one. That does not mean that they're gonna be the national fraternity every year, but it says we can be social and we can have fun, but there's the why of what we do, and that is what we're gonna drive ourselves towards. That's what this organization means. That's what carrying this torch is. If you carry this torch, these events matter more than how much you drink. If you carry the torch for this chapter, then these, um, then complacency will not occur because complacency is the death march of a chapter. If you carry the torch, then you want to do more than the person. There is going to be someone in this room who is going to recruit you to join this organization, and I want you to say that I want to do better than that man who recruited me because I'm going to recruit someone better than me after him. That's what that person should do. That's what carrying the torch is. So yes, if you join a fraternity, and you can join many fraternities, and there are a lot of great fraternities on this campus, but if you join this fraternity, I hope you, care, you join this fraternity because you want to carry the torch because you will mean more 
and you will carry more, and you will say, I'm going to do better than the person behind me, and I'm going to move this organization forward. You're going to fail. You're going to make mistakes. This chapter will make mistakes. But the person who carries the torch for this chapter, and I look around this room, and I see them everywhere here, they, do, they try to fix those mistakes. They don't just let those mistakes happen. That's what an SAB is. That's what this organization is. So the third point. One, privilege not a right. Carry the torch for this chapter. But kind of the final one, and you may be asking yourself, okay, still, I, see, I hear what you're saying, Chris. I, I hear what you're saying, but why SAE? Why SAE? What is the belief? What is the core? What is the value that we bring? And I really struggled with this when I came up with this presentation. When I came up with this, gosh, six years ago when we started doing this. Um, I really, and then I finally found, how many of you are familiar with the, the gentleman, Simon Sinek? Anyone? A couple people. The one who I mention every time. Um, so Simon Sinek talks about um, looking to express your point of view um, in providing kind of inspiration. He says, you see, you live by a, we live by our creed. And every belief that we do, everything that we do, the why behind what we do is our creed, is our true gentleman. In life, people buy not what you do, people buy not what you do, they buy why you do it. People buy not what you do, they buy why you do it. What we do can be socials, and what we do can be brotherhood, and what we can do is awards, but people buy not what you do, they buy why you do it. And that's his words. And so, the what and, and why we do it, everything, every decision we make, every, everything that we do, we do in the spirit of the true gentleman. People buy not what you do, they buy why you do it. Everything that we make, every decision we make, uh, we make in the spirit of the true gentleman. Many chapters say that they're a great fraternity. They have great brotherhood, they have great academics. Come join us. Okay. But people buy not what you do, they buy why you do it. And here why we do it is that um, people, sorry, Every, I'm actually going to slightly switch here. The true gentleman is why we do this. Um, and you'll understand why I lost track. Why I do this is these men in this room. Last week, last week I was given a year to live. And these men invited me here today to speak to you one last time. Which may be partially why I'm slightly distracted, which may be partially why uh, I'm speaking to you kind of in the manner that I am. Um, but the true gentlemen and these men have come to my aid in just a week. Um, they have told, they have reached out to me. They have engaged with me, and they have been here for me. Um, I have brain cancer, and I'll be passing away in a year. And that's the why. I, when, I, when I saw my family, and when I saw, um, I can't tell you the number of text messages and phone calls and shots, um, text of videos, and everything that these gentlemen have, have given to me. And uh, I don't have the end of the speech written. I don't have... Um, what I necessarily want to say, but the fraternity is my why. The fraternity can be your why. It may not be. Some of you will have families, some of you will have children, and they will be your why, but the fraternity is mine. I don't have, um, I don't have kids, I don't have partners. I have my family, but I have these men. And these men are my why. And so I ask you to Take this opportunity. This isn't exactly maybe what you expected when you came to a new member uh, recruitment event, but know that it, this fraternity can be that why for all of you. It can be the why maybe for four years, but it's the why for me. And um, I wanted to be here today. I wanted to leave my legacy. Um, I probably could have done the speech a little bit better, uh, but it's it's why I. I I couldn't, when, I, when the doctors were asking me, do you need to come to this event tonight? Because I'm getting an MRI and a biopsy tomorrow and I start radiation on Monday. 
And they, they're like, do you need to be at this event? And I was like, yes, I need to be at this event. And so I wanted to come to you and I wanted to share with you and I wanted to engage with you that there are great men in this room. That there are great men in this room who will lead you to great leadership opportunities. And there are great men in this room who will love you, who will care for you, and who will embrace every aspect of you. Who I had fraternity men showing up at my um, hospital bed um, in Cincinnati, Ohio, the night that I was diagnosed um, last week. So I share with you all of this that um, we do this fraternity, we, the why is the true gentleman, and we do it through service to others. We do it because we care about each other. We do it because this is an engaging experience. We do it because there's more than just being social. But I'll tell you what, I've had beers with some people in this room, and it's uh, and I loved every part of that, and just to be able to say cheers to you, and you're someone who I want to engage with. So. I, I don't know exactly how to end this. I don't know exactly how to um, change your world or make you join this organization. But know that there is something. And there is something about a fraternity. There is something more to a fraternity than just brotherhood and drinking. And I'll see you in four years and never talk to you again. And that's what I plan to leave behind. So to everyone in this room, I have